once we got down seven, uh, I thought we came back and just really did exactly what we needed to do. Um, I thought Brittany was, was sensational defensively. Kelly McBride, unbelievable. Double-double, 12 rebounds, made the shot to send it into overtime, um, hit a huge three-point play uh, to kind of give us that, that cushion that we needed. And then we just were smart with the ball. Thought we did a really good job down the stretch, using the clock, getting to the foul line. Um, but overall, the defense was fantastic. I'm just, I'm really proud of how we came back. Coach, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the men just went in double overtime. I heard that. It's pretty, uh, pretty good day for our troops. Huh? Yeah, it was exciting if you had the remote in your hand, trying to watch both those games <laughs> at the same time. Can you talk about that 12-2 run late in the second half and, and just how Skyler uh, took things over? She scored eight of those. Well. Yeah, she ignited us. I mean, she hit a three. Um, got to the rim, made, made some free throws, uh, just really, really came on, had a nice, just a great spurt. I thought we, um, we did a good job of attacking, but, um, you know, I think her ability to come up with a big play, you know, to hit the big three when you absolutely have to have some scoring and, uh, and the ball's in her hands, which is where we want it. Talk about Natalie, eight free throws, I think, in the lap in overtime, or was it six, and then you end up limping off the floor like a warrior? <laughs> she is a warrior. And, uh, you know, she um, she didn't practice the last two days. She wasn't allowed to go full court because you heard me in the Seton Hall game, and uh, I knew she was going to come out and give she a good performance. Of what, I'm sorry. She hurt her knee in the Seton Hall game. And, uh, you know, she's, she's just a warrior. You, you knew she was going to play. Um, you knew she was going to play hard and, and do everything she could. We try to get the ball to her, um, late shot clock. She's going to drive the ball. I thought we were going to have a repeat of the Duke game when uh, she came down at the end of regulation uh, with the, the bank shot. So um, really, really, really just, you know, she didn't shoot it well in the beginning of the game. She just stuck with it and kept shooting the ball, which is what her job is. And then I thought did a good job defensively, too. Well, the last year's games were so incredibly tight, four of them. Uh, do you think there's even more parity this year between the two programs? Yeah, I, I think there is. You know, I think we, we have a little more experience in uh, that we have more upperclassmen, but um, boy, they're just so talented. I thought Hartley's played really well. I mean, she she really gave us fits. We had a really hard time guarding her. She did a nice job running the floor. Um, just really had an outstanding game. So yeah, I do. I think um, I think we have a lot of similarities. Okay, what what you do defensively in particular to give that problems tonight? You know, we really didn't do anything different than we normally do. Um, I thought we did. It, we switched a little bit more um, out of necessity more than a plan. Um, I thought our post did a nice job hedging late, late in the game, uh, which you know we weren't doing earlier in the game, um, and that I thought that was very successful. Looking to double team the, the ball, um, you know, late in the game, I thought was good too. You also had an 11-0 run late in the first half. Can you just talk about the resolve of this team? Uh, you know, keep fighting back. Yeah, that's a great word. I, I think they just really, they, they're they willing to, to do whatever it takes and to, to get down, dig down deep when things aren't going well. You know, it's easy to fall apart. Um, it's easy to, to not want the ball or, or to not even, you know, want to play together. And that's when you need to play together the most. And so, you know, I think we had a couple of kind of ugly stretches of offense, but we, we stayed with it defensively. What's going through your mind when both Natalie and Devereaux have two fouls each in the first half, and you have to go with Marquisha. You know, it's time to come of age. I kept thinking, and uh, this would be a great moment for you to step up and uh, and really contribute here and, and just uh, just do it. And I didn't say any of that to her. That's what I was thinking. And, um, you know, we, we kind of talked briefly as a staff about, you know, do we want to go back with Ace or Dev at some point? You know, we were down eight, and I said, you know what, if it gets to ten, we might have to go back with one of them. And then we cut it to six, and then you know, then we kind of got going a little bit more. So I thought she was fantastic. I mean, she really, she did exactly what we wanted her to do. We worked on it at practice. She kept her off the block. She was physical with her. Um, she got some rebounds, and uh, I was really proud of her. Natalie, can you talk about this week? You're out of practice, and I'm sure you're freaking out and wanting to get and practice the games coming up. And what, what was it like emotionally to have to sit out and then to, to come up like you did in, in this game? You know, it was a little frustrating. Um, I had to change knee braces. The other one wasn't working. And, you know, I had to sit out practice, not get reps. And, um, you know, and against a good team, a little worrisome. But, you know, I just, you know, paid attention to practice and kept confident. And um, I got to go in a couple times yesterday. And, um, 
I just felt confident going to the game. What were the emotions when you're lopping off the court with the champion? It was just, there? Um, I knew we'd, went, you'd, we'd won, and um, I just did everything that I could. And I wanted to stay out for one more second, but I couldn't. Um, so it was just really amazing. During the week, uh, Coach Oriyama and, and Shea Ralph, and one of the both couldn't say enough good things about you. In fact, Shea Ralph said at one point she was going to ask you for your autograph <laughs> during the week. They were that impressed with you. Were you aware of that? Um, you heard any of that? And I was not. But you know, I was just that's it's nice to hear. How tough is it to when you're not in the sink early, you know, you miss a couple shots early, how difficult is it to keep shooting, to stay to try to find the flow and still to make something happen? Right, you know, I think that was my fault a little little early. I sh kept um, shooting jumpers and so I had to you know, if I'm not shooting jumpers well then um, to get to the line, um, it's always my bread and butter, and uh, so once I get that, I'll get my confidence up to the free throws. And um, with that, I just kept shooting. I uh, missed a lot of shots, but I kept shooting in size. Totally. Um, obviously, what was at stake in last year's Final Four game was so much more, but uh, what's two wins over UConn mean for this for this program? <laughs> um, it's, it's a great win, especially for here um, at home. I don't think any of us on the team have ever had a win at home um, versus UConn. And so that's, that's an amazing um, win, and uh, we got a lot of teams left in the Big East and we'll meet them again at their place so um, we're just going to you know, keep running this high and they're going the next game. You mentioned at home how uh, electric was that? Oh well, our fans are absolutely amazing. Um, you could hear them, they're deafening and um, right behind us there's like kind of like a wave behind us. We just kept going with them so it's really cool. kept riding it. What's going through your mind that last four seconds going the length of the court and... Yeah. <laughs> just think, yeah. Um, you know I, I got the ball I saw that there was um, just some room to get some momentum, and um, just decided to just take it all the way to the basket. I want to cut, cut short. I kind of wanted to make the ref make a decision, and uh, they, they didn't. <laughs> 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 Martha, can you talk about going big? You change your lineup. You want to go two posts, and then just did you try to get as many mismatches for UConn as possible? You know, actually, the reason we went big was for uh, Natalie Chalman to guard Dolson. That was that was what we wanted. We weren't really thinking so much about the other mismatch. Um, that was something that we, we were going to try to exploit if we had the opportunity, but really I thought Dev would get into early foul trouble <coughs> if she had to guard Dolson, and she managed to get into early foul trouble without guarding her. Anyway, <laughs> and they both did. But, you know, I, that, that was the reason. Um, and Kayla played, played so well off the bench that was, um, it actually worked out really well. We, we got a pretty good uh, rotation going. When we were able to exploit that mismatch, I thought we had a shot, but we turned it over so many times trying to exploit it that it was a little bit, um, got us a little bit out of rhythm. Coach, UConn went the last 350 or 350 something of regulation and all of the overtime without a single field goal. How easy, you know, is, is, you guys play great defense, but is, is it easier to contain a UConn team that doesn't have Maya Moore, somebody that you know is going to take the shot, or is it tougher to stop a team where you don't know where the shot's coming from? You know, I have to admit that it was nice watching film and not seeing Maya out there. Uh, that, that was, because um, you worry so much about her. But at the same time, um, you know, Lewis is a really great three-point shooter. You got to know where she is. Hartley's playing really well. I think she's really stepped up. Um, and then you worry about Dolson. You know, you worry about how can we double team or where can we bring somebody from? Who can we leave? And then Ferris starts out the game with a three, and you think, you know, she was the one we were going to leave uh, most of the time. So, um, you know, I, I think. That's a, a little bit of a transition for them, going from somebody who takes the big shot to now who's going to take the big shot. And uh, it looks to me like Rhea Hartley's the one that, that's going to end up taking them. So I, I think, you know, they're a young team. They're, they're so talented. Um, they're they're going to they're gonna figure it out really quickly. First time, first time your program has won back-to-back -back games against Connecticut. Can you talk about what that does for the program and also what does it do for this year's team? What's the I think continued confidence. You know, we came out of Final Four with, uh, obviously when you get to the National Championship game, you, you think that you're a pretty good team. And then you kind of start all over again. You know, we've got to prove ourselves all over again. So coming out and being able to beat a team that has such a great reputation nationally, ranked second in the country, you know, they got a tremendous program. Uh, they're well coached. You know, they do so many things well. Um, so to be able to beat a really good team, it feels really good. Skyler, what happened to your headband the last 10 minutes of the game? I let it go. No, I, um, I just, I don't know. It was, it was time for it to go. I had a good run. Talk about the game, though, Skyler. What, what was the... Uh, 
what was the feeling out there when you guys were down and then came back a couple times? We knew it would be a game of runs. We talked about that. And I think we, we didn't play well for Zach at all. Mm -hmm. and that was my fault, just not getting us together and not handling it. Um, but I thought in the second half we did a better job. And, um, you know, we're down like that. I think this team is competitive, and we talked about this over and over. Um, we sensed that it was time to wake up, and um, you know, coach helped us with that. Um, and finally, when we did, we just knew that um, the attack was working. You know, we got a lot of people that know how to attack off the dribble and, and transition, a lot of shooters, and we finally start utilizing that and um, really executing on offense. But the defense was what? I mean, the, again, I marveled all year at you guys' the defensive effort. I wondered whether you could do it against a high-quality team, and apparently you did talk about that defense a little bit more. We weren't putting pressure on the ball at first. Uh -huh. um, they, were, they were able to just throw it around and throw it in inside so easily, and I think that we picked it up. Um, full court, just putting pressure on them, um, getting up, and they let us play a little bit out of the front court. So um, we're just trying to slow the ball down and things like that. And when you play a team like Connecticut, they want to run, they want to get it out. And thought we did a better job of getting out and being more physical with them, like they were with us. Mm -hmm. Scott, how big was it to beat UConn again to show, hey, it wasn't just a one-time thing last year? I think it's big for us because we really stressed um, protecting home court and getting the win here. And um, you know, it's different teams. And, um, they're still a very good team, so we want to come out and prove um, that we could be a, a really good team like UConn. Um, you know, it's a sense of pride that kicked in that you know, we didn't want to lose here. And, and then just remembering how um, we lost last year here, kind of like the same predicament um, coming down to the wire. Um, so we wanted to kick it in, and we, we refocused and um, was able to um, get the win. What did you take advantage of? What did you take advantage of that 12-2 run played in the second half? Just what kicked in? You had to of those 12 points. <laughs> Well, just attacking, I feel like um, I was very passive in the um, opening minutes and half. I'm just trying to really attack. Um, like I said, you know, in transition, that's where we're the fastest. Um, me just stepping up on defense, I think that um, I stepped up my intensity because I was frustrated and I wanted to get up and get a stop and get a steal and things like that. And in transition, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go straight to the basket. And, um, I think that opened up some stuff uh, for Natalie and K-Mac and you know, everybody, and, and finally, like I said, we were focusing. Um, we're able to just execute our things. Mm -hmm. well, the UConn's made their reputation over the last decade by going into games, feeling like they were going to win, having that kind of internal confidence in their players and in themselves. Do you, after all this time, do you see that in your program now? Do you have that feeling <coughs> when you talk to your coaches that Notre Dame has gotten to that point? After? I think we are. I think, I think we go into a game expecting to win. I think we have the confidence uh, in each other. And I think it's a different feeling. You know, it's a different feeling. We, we didn't go into the Baylor game that way. Uh, I think that, um, you know, we've, we've kind of matured to that point right now. And I think playing all the ranked teams that we did and playing so well really has helped us get there. But, you know, and a win like this continues to, to feed that confidence. Kelly, you didn't get to play in the game where you guys beat UConn last year. What's it feel like for you to, to, to play in a win and be a crucial part of that? Well, I think it was just, I think it was a learning experience for me just playing such a such a big game against such a huge rival of ours personally as Notre Dame and then just, just a big game. I think I learned a lot about how, how I need to play in these type of games and with the people that I'm playing with and the shots aren't falling, other things that I can do. Get into the game. We've got time for maybe one or two more questions. Coach, you're going to meet them obviously at least one more time, maybe two, maybe three. What is a what is coming out ahead today do for you guys the rest of the way, kind of with that in mind? You know, I think what it does it keeps us in the hunt for number one. That that's that's what we want. And other than that, it doesn't mean a whole lot. It's January seventh. You know, last year at this time we we lost this one and then the next one and then the next one and we still did pretty well. So uh, I think that we can't get all excited about this game. Um, I, I think we need to know that we, we got a big game on Tuesday, and we're going to be ready for that one too. But you know, we we wouldn't have won that game today if it wasn't for the crowd. That, the crowd was amazing. I, I think that uh, they really, really helped us, and they know exactly when we need them. And they came on strong for us today. It was electric in there, and that was huge for us. So I want to thank them. I was louder than Kentucky. It was so easy to get that steam. On that, I think I'm going to.